character. Let's see in the Bible how it got started. It started in the garden, my friend. The Bible says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He created all things that have ever been seen. And then he made man as I preached one night and he breathed into man the very breath of God and man became a living soul. In the garden he was placed in a perfect place, a perfect person. In a perfect world, nothing had ever gone wrong. God had created that. He created that because he wanted communion with something, someone that loved him, not because he was formed to be that way, but because he wanted to. And he only had one law, only one commandment was he to keep, and he fell in the garden. So death started in the garden. When the animal, the innocent animal was slain and a covering was made for Adam and Eve and as they left the garden, God made a way that they could not get back in. Somebody said, well, why would God do such a thing? Because the tree of life was still there. They could have eaten that tree of life and still lived, but God never intended for mankind to live in a sin-cursed world or a sin-cursed body. From the foundation of the world, before there anything ever was, God devised a plan that ye and I would be drawn back to him. He knows everything about us, but yet gives us the choice to choose what we choose to do with our life that he has given us. So death started there in the garden when Satan come and Eve was deceived and Adam eat it wide open and they were separated there and they went out and God told them, the day that you eat of this tree, you're surely gonna die. Someone has said, well, when they ate of the tree, they didn't die right then. Well, they did spiritually. Spiritual death entered in the garden when they were separated there, severed the relationship with God, driven out. But even in their sin, I'm, boy, this right here is rich. Even as God made them a covering, everywhere they went, God still saw them. And the day would come that they would die. So we see death started and from Adam even until now, even until today, I've looked and I've seen where certain folks have left this world and gone into eternity. They tell me that every time I snap my fingers that 14 people leave this world in America alone. One of these days, I'll not snap my fingers. One of these days, it'll be me. If God doesn't return one of these days, it'll be you. I don't believe he's tarried his coming. I believe there's a day set he's coming. But if he doesn't come in a normal life of span, maybe a hundred years, you and I will go this same route. We have watched our loved ones. We have seen pain come. We have seen things happen that we did not want. We did not appreciate. But yet, it's not because of a particular sin that they done. It was because of the Adamic nature of man. This body is corrupt. And it's going to die. But thank God I've got a, some good news. Sin started in the garden. But now let's move across the pages. If you look in Hebrews chapter 11, it'll call many characters of the Bible, many men and women who lived as you and I live. And the Bible said, these all died in faith, not having yet received the promise, but seeing them afar off. So we see that death started. But, but let's look what happens as we go out of the Old Testament and we roll in to the new after 400 and some years of silence. God has not been speaking with man. Man in his own device and his own ways has tried to develop some type of religion, some type of being, some type of person who he can contact with. But the Bible said when the fullness of time had come, it pleased God to send his own son in the likeness of flesh born of a woman yet without sin. He was born that day lived up to about 33 years, 33 and a half. But here we see there's a day that comes. Not only do we see death started but I want to look just a moment at death's supper. 
You and I, we participate in that usually at least once a year. Sometimes churches do it every three months. But it doesn't matter. He said, as oft as you do these things, you do it in remembrance of me. We take of the Lord's Supper. We take of the bread. We take of the wine. I'm talking about death supper. He was gathered there all those years. Lambs had died. But this time, there was something different taking place. A man was dying. A man, a God man if you will, was getting ready not to become a sacrifice but the sacrifice for sins. Hebrews 9 verse 24 through the remainder of that chapter begins to read like this for Christ hath not entered into the holy place made by hands with are the figures of the true but now into heaven itself not that he should often appear as the priest did in the olden days but now once in the end hath he appeared that he might put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Watch here. For as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment, but unto us that look for him shall he appear a second time without sin unto salvation. I say, bless God, I'm here to tell you tonight, death has no reign over God's people. Can you imagine how the disciples must have felt that night? Jesus told him, he said, go into the city. You'll find a man bearing a pitcher of water. He'll show you where to make ready this Passover. He says, I've desired with great desire to take this Passover with thee. What he was getting ready to do was usher out the old and bring in the new covenant. Wherein the first covenant was weak, that it could not save. And then there therefore has to become the death of the testator in order for it to be any good. He's showing them they've gone into that upper room. I believe they have eaten their dinner. They have been resting. And now Jesus takes a piece of bread and he uses it and he tears that bread and he says take notice this is my body which is broken for you and he gives them all a piece of it oh do you see what he's doing there he took one piece of bread and he tore it which would be his body the representation and he gave each and every one of them a piece it was as though each and every one of them was receiving a piece of him in the fact that when they received him they all became yet a one back together Oh, bless his name. Can I tell you, I'm glad that when I come and I take of that bread, I take his bread. It's a representation of his body. Yes, it has been broken. And yes, it has died on the cross. And yes, he has risen again. But every time I eat of that, I do it in remembrance of what he done for me. That one day, that which was in me shall come together in him and we shall live forever. And then he blessed the cup. And he said, take and drink. This is my blood which is shed for many. I believe they sat there in amazement. What's he doing? He's tried to tell them in the last few days. He's going to Calvary. He's going to die. He's going, they're going to crucify him. They wouldn't, they wouldn't want to have that. And before you, we think we're all so spiritual. If we'd been walking with him, seeing him do the things he's doing, we wouldn't want to accept that either. But they sang a song and they went out. I'm talking about death's supper. It was a picture of his death on Calvary. He goes out of that place, goes into a garden, tells his men to pray, goes a stone cast away and prays, gets on his face and he pleads to his father. What's he saying, preacher? He's saying,